Over the last few years, I've been conducting tests with uh, this media dihydrogen monoxide known in layman's turn as agua, and it is fantastic for some things and maybe less fantastic for others. One of those things that's not fantastic for seems that when using that as a test media, its container usually explodes or erupts violently. And so you get limited, uh, limited opportunity to continue to test with the, the same subject. But I specifically want to look at the XTP line of bullets from Hornady, which here's a few of them. I believe this is a 300 grain XTP for a 44 caliber. And then these three are all 357 caliber. This is the 125 grain standard XTP. This is the 158 grain standard XTP. And this is the 158 grain flat point uh, designated with an FP. You'll notice that they are identical except they're different. This one has this teeny tiny little hollow point. This one has a, a the standard kind of wider hollow point you'd expect to see in a, an XTP. Now I really have grown to like these. They are a standard cup and core. Here's an example of where they, it's separated, but most of the time, as you can see, uh, they stick together, at least in my experience. But in the right circumstances, it can separate. I love these because in the past they were affordable, but they're also an excellent hollow point. It's a, a great round. They were affordable enough for plinking. And if you needed to use them for self-defense, they're a fine bullet for that. But what we can look at is how velocity affects this. Right here we have the about the 700 feet per second range. As you can see, it starts to open up just ever so slightly. The copper jacket opens up just a little bit, but it's just, it has a failure to chooch. What I find interesting about this one right here is this one and this one have the exact same amount of unique powder behind them. And yet you see a, a markedly difference in expansion. Now, I don't know exactly why I was getting such a wide spread, but I was getting a huge spread of velocities. And, and I had uh, meticulously measured out the powder. So I was really expecting to get a, a very minimal SD. And then I was finding out I was getting a huge SD. Part of that may have been powder position. This was in the, my guess is, like I said, that's that's going to be in the 700 zone. And and this one was probably in the 9 to 950 zone. Just judging on, on the widespread and velocities that I was getting, I would guess this, that unique is a, a position sensitive powder. Right here, this is a factory load of Hornady Custom 38 Special. And you can see it just, it started to mushroom out. There's some deformity. It consistently curls back all the pedals. You get some expansion, but, but not a lot. But what I noticed out of these rounds right here, very, very consistent velocities and very accurate. That's actually the load I'm trying to copy and duplicate on my own. Uh, I wish powder was more available. I'd try bullseye. I'd like to try a couple others, but I, I really want to see if I can duplicate it. When I contacted Hornady, they suggested that I use bullseye, but they don't really use the same powder as we do. But that was going about 830 feet per second. And so like I said, this one you can see is expanding more, has even more deformity. All the pedals are back, but it's nice and even. Now this one was backed by, oh, what was it, some 700X, probably from the 60s. And I cannot remember, but it was probably in the high 900s. One thing I did not test on these ones was accuracy. I ran out of time. Now that same bullet, when fired out of the vernable 357 Magnum, getting much higher velocities. So on this one, we were looking at an average of around 1,450 feet per second. 
Now you can see a huge difference in how well that is expanding with the higher velocities. It's distortion. It's also depth of expansion. And I really like how consistent that is. I, I've said it before, I, I don't think you have to have a, a fancy bonded bullet like, like these ones to be effective. You need a bullet that does the job, hits vitals, and delivers all the kinetic energy it can into the target. So really, you want to get really, really good expansion, you, you've got to up the velocity. You're getting some expansion, and it's not that these would not be effective, but it's hard to argue with it. That one did deliver more energy on target, and it was noticeable. This one right here is a 158 grain shot out of 357 Magnum, and I think it was traveling at a good old 1,257 feet per second on average, but it's got the flat point with that real small hollow point. They made this teeny little hollow point, which still allows for expansion, but also allows for a lot of weight retention. I, I don't have any recovery of this one, but I imagine this one will look a lot more like this. And bring in the behemoth, 300 grain bullet right there. And this one hit, I can't even remember how many jugs of dihydrogen monoxide this bad boy went through and luckily stopped. But uh, this guy, just, just tremendous amount of energy and yeah, I'm a fanboy. You can see just a slight difference between the expansion on this and this one. I know this is not exhaustive, but it does show us the difference in velocity, I think quite clearly, and how velocity uh, benefits these bullets. It also demonstrates how that flat point really restricts, but still allows sufficient expansion. Now here are the same XTPs, these 125 grains, now, and they happen to be fired into uh, earthen media and was able to recover these in the dirt and this one I suspect got hit maybe after being fired. I would suggest if you're gonna use this for self-defense, you wanna be pushing these as, as fast as you can. Before we start with my standard draws, we need to make sure we get a good beverage going here. Listen, I just wanted a little light midnight snack right there. And then uh, I do have a question for all y'all that aren't in the great state of Utah. Uh, do these things look familiar to you? They're like little jellied candy with chocolate on them. I think these ones are cherry. These are orange ones uh, with milk chocolate. Fantastic, by the way. You may notice right here, we've, we've got my man card. I may lose it today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit to something that I don't like to admit to because, well, it's kind of embarrassing. I got more shoes than my wife does. Note to self, triple sec and uh, cherry Pepsi, no bueno. This video is brought to you by and sponsored by ShoeCareSupplies.com. I'd like to appreciate those fine people for sending over these goods. All I had to do is give them full price and shipping and they sent it right to my door. It's been a pleasure. Uh, first time I ever bought stuff from them, but it was kind of nice being able to, to find the products that I needed and wanted. As I said, you know, I, I just I just expressed my love for shoes. I clip off a couple of these corners right here, this man card. Ah, oh, crap. Only thing left to do now is get a proper burial and hope that in the future I can do something to uh, earn it back. Oh man. <laughs> I'll miss you, man. We'll reunite again someday. This one was one of my very favorite. That was a hollow point, 158 grain semi-wad cutter, uh, 38 special plus P. 
and it's got a special place in my heart. That was an excellent bullet. And someday, that's kind of the next one I'd really like to copy and, and get, get down. I'd like to be able to find a good load for that. A couple, what is that, a 380 auto? That was uh, one that went in the dirt. This is, oh, Golden Saber. I think they're, what, 90 grains or something. They're teeny little bullets, but even out of the 380, they opened up really nicely. You can see a 9 millimeter version of the 147 grain in Golden Saber. But here you got a bigger bullet moving a whole lot faster out of a 9 millimeter, and you can, you can see... Although it's smooth, you have a definite deformation of that lead. This is a 45. This is a Sig V crown. This is the back, what the backside looks like. That thing just opens right on up. Great expansion. But if you look at that, you still see the factory tooling marks. Yeah, there's there's deformation in it. As beautiful as this thing is, and as hard as it is hitting. You're still really not getting that deformation of the lead like you're seeing in here, where it completely changes the shape of the lead from hitting so hard. Or like we see on these bonded bolts, these are, are law enforcement rounds. of uh, Some of them are 40 caliber, some are nine millimeter. This little guy, this one's, this, this bullet, it has a special place in my heart. This is a Hydroshock, I can't remember. It's like a 115 grain, it's a, a small bullet. Moving pretty good for 38 special, and you can see when it hit the the dihydrogen monoxide, this thing just turned inside out, just like it's supposed to, and you still see that little telltale hydroshock post. This is an earlier one, I believe they've changed the design just a little bit, but I don't have any of those, and I saved it. This is the only bullet that I've ever been able to shoot twice. I was able to retrieve that thing, load it up again and shoot it because it was in such good shape. I'll tell you this, the Hydroshock does way better in water than it does in rubber. Now the Gold Dot Hollow Point, a 135 grain, if I remember right, Gold Dot Hollow Point plus P for 38 Special, that, that was this one. This one was shot in the same media as this, but it did deform ever so slightly it outperformed it, of course. It's a lot bigger bullet, but uh, and it was able to expand. Where this one, basically, the only thing it had on it was rifling marks. The same bullet shot into dihydrogen monoxide, and on each one of these, you can see a little copper fleck, hence the name Gold Dot. So these ones are they're bonded bullet, and see how. Each of these little talons right here, just like on these ones, that lead is stuck to it. Where on the non-bonded bullet, uh, although they are connected well, mechanically fastened to each other, uh, you can see right here on the jacket, there's no lead that sticks to that. Same here, uh, you can see that on the XTPs. But where these are bonded, it's actually a plated bullet. And once they plate it, then they do all the swaging and then they form the hollow point. And, and while they're forming that hollow point, uh, it creates this little gold dot that goes on the bottom. When you're able to shoot these into a, a media that doesn't have a lot of inconsistencies like dihydrogen monoxide or ballistic gel, just like these ones right here, they just, they mushroom beautifully. What I find interesting on this, these things have a gigantic big old gaping hollow point, you can kind of see half of it right here. And so these open up well, they get some deformation, but really a lot like this, they just fold open. Now I think it's good and we got to remember it is a 38 special. It's designed to be shot out of a short barrel pistol where you're going to have a harder time getting them high velocities. It is what it is. And, and we base maybe a little bit too much off of it. Now, I can tell you from tests, these penetrate very well. They're, they're actually, for what it is, very good bullet. I think, I can't remember which one of these, there's actually a gold dot uh, nine millimeter in here. But you can see these things, the lead's deformed. You're not seeing the forming marks. You're not seeing anything. And, and once again, 
that's where velocity comes into play. A well-built bullet fired at a high velocity, you're gonna have traumatic effects on target. Uh, right here, I believe this is a Rainier. I don't even know what it was fired at, probably in the 700 feet per second range. 